Welcome to Virtual Pathfinder YouTube channel. This video is about imaging Jupiter using a Skywatcher 130 PDS with and without Barlow lens and atmospheric dispersion corrector. I have previously done some imaging of Jupiter using Celestron C90 Mark and Skywatcher Evostar 72 ED, but this time I wanted to try planetary imaging using a Newtonian telescope. My Skywatcher 130 PDS telescope has the widest aperture of all my telescopes, which in theory would give the highest image resolution. As with all reflectors, this telescope has lower contrast than a refractor telescope. That may cause some problems because of a lower signal to noise ratio. That became apparent in this test. To get the maximum information out of the system, the focal length needs to be adjusted so the image sensor pixel pitch matches the optical resolution of the telescope. It is a straightforward calculation of the angular resolution using the telescope aperture as input. The image sensor should then sample at double the spatial frequency compared to the optical resolution of the telescope. For the Skywatcher 130 PDS, the optimal focal length is about 1840 mm. Since the focal length of this telescope is 650 mm, that would require a 3 times magnifying Barlow lens. Unfortunately, I only have a 2.5 times Barlow lens, which gives a focal length of 1625 mm. That means there will be a slight undersampling, but very little. As a side note, I can mention that the Maxutov Cassegrain telescopes usually have focal lengths which are almost perfectly matched to today's typical sensors. That means that no Barlow lens is needed, which is wonderful, since each optical element added to the system may cause optical deterioration due to aberrations or reflections, which can be a disaster at high magnification. Apart from using the 25 times Barlow lens, I also added an atmospheric dispersion corrector to reduce color fringing in the image. All of these things create quite a long optical tube sticking out from the telescope. Another thing about this telescope is that it's heavier than my other telescopes. I think it is about 4.5 kilos including the rings. With the camera and all parts, I think it's near 5 kilograms in weight in total. That is exactly the maximum load I would put on my photography tripod, but then I also feel quite uncomfortable. For that reason, I use more sturdy heavy tripods such as a wooden tripod or an astronomical mount. That is not a requirement for my other telescopes, which weigh between 1.8 and 2.5 kilograms. I tracked Jupiter using a motorized mount and the camera used was a mirrorless Micro Four Thirds crop sensor camera. My first attempt to capture Jupiter was not planned so I had to assemble the rig around midnight and it was hard to find all the parts. Eventually I got it all together but I couldn't focus on anything at infinity. The camera showed nothing. After trying for a while I gave up, suspecting I needed an extension tube. So instead the first test was without Barlow lens or atmospheric dispersion corrector. That means that I couldn't get the most out of the telescope resolution in that test. Therefore I did all the preparations of the setup before the second test, where the Barlow lens and the atmospheric dispersion corrector was attached. I will show the results side by side at the end of this video. There is a certain improvement in the second test. Before I get to the results of the test, here are a few words about Jupiter. It is the biggest planet in our solar system with a diameter about 11 times that of Earth. It has a fast rotation period of about 9.9 .9 hours and an orbital period of 11.9 .9 years. The distance to Jupiter is about 35 light minutes. It has at least 79 moons, where Ganymede is the largest. Here 
Here is the first video clip from the first test without Barlow lens or atmospheric dispersion corrector. As you can see it is a very noisy image. Part of the reason for that is that there were probably thin clouds in the way and it may also have to do with the low contrast in the Newtonian telescope. The cloud bands are visible but not much more detail which is expected since the focal length is not optimal from resolution point of view. I stacked video frames in Lynchios to see how much detail could be extracted and as expected it was not much more detail than the cloud bands. The second clip shows the Galilean moons. Three of them are visible and the fourth is either in front or behind Jupiter. The third clip is quite noisy and again not much details in it. The last couple of video clips are similar to the first ones. Here is the setup for the second test using a two and a half times Barlow lens and atmospheric dispersion corrector. I put the video clips from this test side by side with the best clip from the first test without Barlow and atmospheric dispersion corrector. As you can see in these three clips there is a certain improvement compared to the results from the first test. But I'm still not satisfied with these results. I think this telescope can perform better. It may be that the viewing conditions were bad during these occasions. I will make one more try later to see if I can get more details of Jupiter using this telescope. My general conclusions are that the Newtonian telescope is good at gathering light when imaging faint deep sky objects, but it may not be optimal for planets since the low contrast makes it hard to get a good signal to noise ratio. So far I have managed to get a lot better results using a small refractor or the Celestron C90 Maxitov Cassegrain telescope. To get the most out of the theoretical resolving power a 3 times Barlow lens should be used. The viewing conditions weren't optimal so I will make one more test to see if I can improve the results whenever the weather allows it. Finally, I have to point out that it's very important to prepare the imaging setups daytime to get everything right and set the focus at infinity. My first test reminded me how difficult it is to do something spontaneously when it comes to astrophotography. I mostly use my ordinary photography equipment so I don't have a rig in standby to grab and go. Some telescopes have too short back focus and need an extension tube to focus at infinity. All these things need to be prepared before imaging. I wish you luck with astrophotography. I will make more tests of telescopes whenever the weather conditions are good. If you're interested in more videos like this please remember to subscribe to this channel. Until next time, have a nice week.